One day, in a reply to my atheist friend. One day, an American Facebook friend, who is an atheist philosopher, sent me a paper from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy saying that there are a number of philosophical arguments that make a compelling case for atheism. I replied to him saying, To be honest with you, I'm not a good philosopher actually. I cannot even claim that I'm a good reader of philosophy. But I think I still can share with you my thoughts based on my own understanding. I took a quick look, not in depth to be honest, at the paper and found it is based on two main ideas, the hiddenness of God and the dilemma of evil. So let me try to summarize my reply in some points. 1. The hiddenness of God. Believe it or not, the Muslims' faith and belief are all about believing in the unseen. The pillars of the Islamic faith are simply based on this idea, believing in the unseen. At the very beginning of the Quran, you will find that the first characteristic of those who are conscious of God Almighty Allah is the belief in the unseen. This is the book about which there is no doubt, a guidance for those conscious of Allah. Who believe in the unseen, Quran 2-2-3. This is the Quran, in which there is nothing of any doubt, neither in terms of its origin, nor in terms of its meaning. It is the word of Allah, guiding those who are mindful of Allah to the way that leads to Him. They believe in the revelation that Allah sent down to you, O Prophet, and in that which He revealed to all the other prophets before you, peace be upon them, without distinction. And they have a definite belief in the afterlife, with its rewards and punishments. Al-Baqarah 2-3 The Power of Mind Actually, I find this so logical and makes sense. If we cannot believe but in what we can see with our eyes, then where is the power of mind here? Not because I cannot see something, it means that it does not exist. Also, not because someone on the other side of the earth cannot see you, it means that you do not exist. Not because we cannot see our feelings and emotions, this means that they do not exist. I think this does not make sense. We still can believe in the existence of many things even when we cannot see them. God Almighty Allah gave us the mind as a tool, among other tools, to use in thinking, pondering and contemplating the signs around us in this universe. This reflective contemplation of the universe will ultimately lead us to Him. And Allah has extracted you from the wombs of your mothers not knowing a thing, and He made for you hearing and vision and hearts, i.e., intellect, that perhaps you would be grateful. Quran 1678 Allah brought you, O people, out of your mother's wombs after the completion of the term of pregnancy, as babies not realizing anything and he gave you hearing to hear with, eyesight to see you with, and hearts to reason, in the hope that you may give thanks to him for these favors that he has given you. And now colon 78. We were ordered to use our intellect and to walk in the earth to think and ponder, from where and how all this came. More reflections. You know what? Away from complicated philosophical thoughts, sometimes I talk to myself saying, oh. This so simple and design light white paper can neither produce itself nor be produced by nothing nor move from here to there without a mover. Even if no person came to move it, at least some air did. So, still there is a doer. Then, how about this so intelligent, sophisticated, harmonized, accurate, amazingly systematic giant creature called universe? How come there is no doer, finder, or creator behind it? Say, O Muhammad, travel through the land and observe how he began creation. Then Allah will produce the final creation, i.e., development. Indeed Allah, over all things, is competent. Quran 2920 O Messenger, say to these deniers of the resurrection, travel through the land and think how Allah began the creation. Then Allah will restore people after their death to the second life for the resurrection and reckoning. Allah is powerful over everything, nothing is outside His ability, so He is able to resurrect people just as He created them in the first place. Along Kaboot colon 20 so have they not traveled through the earth and have hearts by which to reason and ears by which to hear? For indeed, it is not eyes that are blinded, but blinded are the hearts which are within the breasts. Quran 2246. Did these people who reject what the messenger, peace be upon him, brought not travel in the land, to see the remains of these destroyed cities? So that they would reflect with their minds to take heed and so that they would to accept their stories to learn from them? It is established that blindness is not blindness of eyesight, but rather the blindness which is destructive is blindness of insight, where such a person does not reflect or take lessons. al Haj colon 48. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and earth, and the alternation of the night and the day, and the, great, ships which sail through the sea with that which benefits people. And what Allah has sent down from the heavens of rain, giving life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness and dispersing therein every, kind of, moving creature. And, his, directing of the winds and the clouds controlled between the heaven and the earth are signs for a people who use reason. Quran 2-164 The following are clear signs of the oneness of Allah, glory be to him, for those who understand the evidence and proof, the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the wonders in them. 
the succession of night and day, the passing of life and death, happiness and sorrow, wealth and poverty. Ships that sail through the waters of the sea, carrying food, clothing, trade and other things that people need and which benefit them. Water that Allah sends down, bringing the earth to life with the agriculture and pasture that grows in it, and the living creatures he spreads out in it. The changing of the winds from one direction to another, and the clouds, controlled between the sky and the earth. Al-Baqarah 164. The Test. Let's look at the issue from another perspective. What if all people can easily see what they should and are ordered to believe in? How could people be tested? Yes, tested. What about that test, which is the core reason for this whole life? And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and his throne had been upon water, that he might test you as to which of you is best indeed. Quran 11-7. He, may he be glorified, is the one who created the heavens and the earth in their magnificent form, and he created whatever is in them in a period of six days. Before he created them, his throne was on water. He created all of this in order to test which of you, O people, is best in doing actions that please Allah and which of you does actions that anger him. He will repay each group according to what they deserve. If you, O messenger, say, you, O people, will be resurrected after you die to be taken to account, then those who disbelieve in Allah and reject the resurrection will say. This Quran that you recite is nothing but sheer magic and it is clearly false. Hud colon 7. Indeed, we have made that which is on the earth adornment for it that we may test them, as to, which of them is best indeed. Quran 18 to 7. Surely, I have made the creation on the face of this earth an adornment for it, so I can test them to see which of them does the best actions which please Allah and which of them is worse than actions. So that I may reward everyone with what they deserve. al kaf colon 7. He, who created death and life to test you, as to, which of you is best indeed dash, Quran 67 to 2. The one who created death and life to test you, O people, which one of you is better in terms of actions? He is the Almighty who no one can overpower, the forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. Al-Mulk colon 2. And this point is also shared with the second point in the argument, which is the existence of evil. To the evil. So far I don't know whether or not you agree that life is not fair and it's, as I said earlier a test. Big and hard test. Let's imagine this situation. Someone held a party and invited many people. In the place of the party, there were two entrances, one on the right and the other on the left. The owner of the party did not ask or force anyone to enter from a certain entrance of the two. He just opened them and let people freely choose which entrance to go through. Man made evil. This is exactly the same. God created both the good and the evil to test us. He did not force anyone to choose this or that. He informed us that in this life there will be good and evil, good things and bad things. God told us about the consequences of each of them, the reward and punishment that follow them. Then he allowed us to freely choose what to do, the good or the bad. This is so fair I think. We are free creatures with free wills. Moreover, we know, let's say, the manual of life and the options that will be available. We know the consequences of each of these options in the afterlife. Now we are free to choose accordingly. And we test you with evil and with good as trial, Quran 21:35. And I test you, O mankind, in the worldly life through duties, blessings and hardships. Alan Bia colon 35. God will judge everyone according to his free choices which he makes in this present life. Do you know when we can doubt that there is something wrong and there is, let's say, a kind of randomness? If there is no other certain point of time, beyond this unfair time and place, when everyone will take what he really deserves, either good or bad, so fairly and justly. Every soul will taste death. And we test you with evil and with good as trial, into us you will be returned. Quran 21:35. Every believing and disbelieving soul will taste death in the world. And I test you, O mankind, in the worldly life through duties, blessings and hardships, then after your death you shall be returned to me alone and nobody else. Then I shall reward you for your deeds. al Bia colon 35. And fear a day when you will be returned to Allah. Then every soul will be compensated for what it earned, and they will not be wronged, i.e., treated unjustly. Quran 2-281. Fear the punishment of a day in which you all will be returned to Allah and you will have to stand before Him. Then every person will be given the reward of any good or evil action he did. They will not be wronged by receiving a reward less than their good actions or a punishment more than their evil actions. Al-Baqarah 281. This is the last revealed verse of the Quran. Out of man control evil. Prophets and messengers of God Almighty Allah are the most honorable and sacred persons chosen by Allah, Lord of all worlds. However, they are also the most severely tested people. Probably to be an example for us on how to conduct ourselves in this life, this life that is not the real one, and is not the real measurement of goodness and fairness.
In Islam, God greatly rewards the believer for every hardship or calamity he faces if he accepts and shows patience towards it. Nothing will go in vain. And be patient, for indeed, Allah does not allow to be lost the reward of those who do good. Quran 11 to 115 be patient in doing what you have been instructed to do with respect to being upright and avoiding the things you have been prohibited from, such as transgression and leaning towards the wrongdoers. Allah will not cause the reward of those who do good to be wasted. Instead, He will accept from them the best of what they did and will give them their reward in accordance with their best actions. Hud 115 How wonderful is the case of a believer, there is good for him in everything and this applies only to a believer. If prosperity attends him, he expresses gratitude to Allah and that is good for him, and if adversity befalls him, he endures it patiently and that is better for him. Hadith. If a thorn pricks a believer or he is hurt more than that then that is expiation for his sins. Hadith. Also. Nothing afflicts the believer, whether fatigue, grief, disease, even the worry that concerns him, except that by it, Allah removes something from his bad deeds. Hadith. Furthermore. And know that in patience with regard to something that you dislike there is much goodness. Hadith. The other face of evil. This is one side of the issue. Another side is that every face of evil, pain, or hardship, carries a face of goodness, even if it was a hidden face. There is no 100% pure evil. Even the events that are beyond the control of humans, such as diseases, natural disasters, and so on, happen also for a reason and wisdom, and guess what? They also carry a positive and good face. With evil, life has meaning. Goodness is meaningless without the existence of evil. Evil is a stimulus to many things, like a knowing the philosophy of life and faith, b generating innovations and inventions, since evil is a problem that humans seek to solve through inventing a cure for the disease and a solution to the difficulty, c building up a challenging spirit for overcoming evil and gaining virtue and morality. Professor Ewing, the professor of ethics at Cambridge, says, we must overcome an evil to obtain the virtue of overcoming evil d developing human abilities through facing evil and its various forms and levels e the test in life is meaningless without evil what is the meaning and importance of the values of charity generosity mercy empathy consolation patience support cooperation etc without the existence of evil finally if we can understand that behind this orderly and intelligently designed universe and all knowledgeable and all wise maker i think we will be able to understand also that everything happens for a reason and wisdom we will be able to understand that there is wisdom behind everything, even the evil, pain, and suffering that take place in the world. Even if we do not know this wisdom or cannot understand it, we still will be able to believe that it exists. These are my spontaneous thoughts for the moment. Forgive me for this terribly long reply. Conclusion. Here, my reply to my atheist friend ends. But there is an important note I have to tell you, my dear reader. Yes, he is an atheist. However, I talk to him with words like Allah and Quran. This is because he is searching for God, and is reading the Quran. Thus, I talk to him with the concept of God I believe in, and according to the Quran he reads. Oh! I forgot to say something. I forgot to say that he is now an ex-atheist. He is not an atheist anymore. Now he believes in God. He believes that there is true God.